Hello everyone. Few days back, I uploaded a class regarding properties of synapse, and few of the students they have requested to upload the difference between occlusion and subliminal fringe. Like there was slight confusion, so I will try to explain these two properties: occlusion and subliminal fringe by drawing the diagram. See, first of all. Synapse it is between afferent and efferent neuron. So in this one, I'm trying to draw the diagram of afferent and efferent with different colors. Like say this first diagram. Two, one is A, the other one is B afferent. Okay, so A afferent is with blue and B one is with red, and then there are the branches. The blue one, if we count. These are ten branches. Okay, these are the ten branches, and similarly, the B afferent it has got ten branches, and then these green one they are efferent one. So if we just stimulate this A, how many of the efferent will get stimulated? Because A has got Ten branches: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all these ten of the efferent neurons, they will get stimulated or they will get excited. It it means the action potential will be generated in these ten efferent neurons. Now, if instead of A we stimulate only B efferent. Then how many efferent will get stimulated? It has got ten branches. B one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. So ten of the efferent neurons. These ten of the efferent neuron they will get stimulated, or we can say there will be generation of the action potential in these ten if efferent neurons. But what will happen if we stimulate simultaneously both A and B? Then all these efferent neurons they will get stimulated. And how many numbers are there? If we count from starting to the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen efferent neurons. They are generating action potential, or they are getting stimulated. So we can say occlusion. Occlusion means a situation in which response to stimulation of two presynaptic neuron collectively or simultaneously two presynaptic neuron is less than the sum total of the response obtained when they are stimulated individually or separately. Like when A is stimulated individually, there will be. Then, if the neuron getting stimulated, if B is stimulated individually, separate from the A, not A only B, then also ten efferent will get stimulated. So logically, if we see mathematically, means A stimulates ten efferent neuron, B stimulates ten efferent neurons. If we collectively stimulate A and B, mathematically it says ten plus ten, it should be twenty. But no, only fifteen are getting. Stimulated. That is called occlusion. What is the reason for that? Reason is these central five branches. If we count red one, one, two, three, four, five, or if we count blue one, one, two, three, four, five. These central five branches of A and B. They are stimulating the same efferent neuron. This blue and red only one efferent neuron. This blue and red only one. Similarly, these five. So we can say there is overlapping of afferent neurons, overlapping of afferent neurons in the central distribution. That is called as occlusion. Now coming to subliminal fringe. First of all, we will know what is the meaning of this word subliminal or subminimal. It kind of sounds like tongue twisting. So you can use subliminal or subminimal, one and same thing. It means below threshold. fringe fringe means border the one which is located in the border periphery so subliminal fringe means the border ones 
they have got the blue threshold or sub threshold stimulus so okay we will try to understand it by drawing the diagram so for subliminal fringe this is the diagram if we look at similarly we have got two afferent neurons a and b the blue one a how many branches are there it has got one two three four five six seven and how many for the red one b one two three four five six seven okay so seven branches for a and seven branches for b so same to same like occlusion if we stimulate only a and these green one are the efferent if we stimulate only a how many efferent neuron will get stimulated because it has got seven branches and both seven branches they are forming synapses with seven efferent neurons but if we stimulate a only five of them only the these upper five efferent neurons they will get stimulated similarly if we stimulate only b it has got seven branches but only this lower one one two three four five these five neuron efferent neurons they will get stimulated now if we look at uh, the diagram the diagram shows a has got seven branches so it should stimulate the seven efferent neurons but no the periphery one the border one these two blue one they are not generating enough potential in these efferent neuron that it converts gets converted into action potential it means these efferent neurons when they get branch only from the blue one the x the potential generated will be sub threshold the th or we can say the stimulus they are obtaining from these blue branches is sub threshold stimulus to generate the action potential now there will be slight little bit of excitability but it won't be strong enough to generate the action potential similarly if we stimulate b b has also got two peripheral branches so we can say the two peripheral branches of the a as well as the b they are supplying the same efferent neurons so if we just stimulate b not a only b then also these peripheral branches of the b they will not provide enough stimulus to generate action potential in these two sub threshold so we can say if we look at the diagram a has got seven branches it doesn't mean that all the seven branches will provide the same strength of the stimulus to these seven efferent neurons no the strength of the stimulus depends on as we all know there will be the release of the neurotransmitter so there is optimum neurotransmitter for the upper five one but these lower two one they are generating or synthesizing or releasing less amount of the neurotransmitter that is not strong enough to generate the action potential similarly these two branches of the b they are also not releasing enough neurotransmitter to generate action potential in these two peripheral efferent neurons now what will happen if we stimulate a and b simultaneously then as individually the upper five for the a and lower five for the b they will generate the action potential 5 plus 5 10 now what will happen for this central one the a branch blue one it was generating it was releasing less amount of the neurotransmitter and b was also releasing less amount of the neurotransmitter so if we collectively or simultaneously stimulate this less amount of the neurotransmitter from the a and from the b it will combine up and will be strong enough to generate the action potential so if we stimulate simultaneously a and b then all these 14 efferent neuron 5 upper 1 5 lower 1 plus these two sorry not 14 12 5 plus 5 10 and these two 12 all these 12 efferent neuron will get stimulated so if we stimulate a only five efferent neurons are generating action potential or getting stimulated if we stimulate only b only b then 
the five efferent neurons are generating action potential. If we combine them A plus B, what will math say? Math will say 5 plus 5, 10. But no, it won't be 10. It will be 5 plus 5 plus 2. 2 fringe 1. These are the fringe 1, border ones. Border for B and border for A. Which were getting sub-threshold or sub-minimal individually from either A or either B. That sub-minimal from A and B, it will combine and will generate the action potential. So, it will become 5 plus 5 plus 2, 12. Okay. So, we can say in this subliminal fringe, these border ones, both of them two, it, they are getting stimulated when we, when we stimulate A and B collectively, it means there is happening summation. Spatial summation is happening in this one. So, spatial summation is the reason for these fringe efferent neurons to generate the action potential. That's all.